Hello everyone and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. This video is brought to you by RV Bat Transmit, the quickest way to export multiple Revit models to different file formats like Navisworks and IFC. Get your free copy today by following the link in this video's description. Today's lesson will show you how to create in your Revit model an extruded brick facade like the one we see here on the left hand side. This can be a very good way to add some nice shadow and texture to your building elevations. As you can see here on the right, I have made the same kind of system there in Revit. This is how it looks like in perspective and this is how you can see that same brick wall in 3D. This is done using a custom curtain wall type. If I now select this and turn on the properties panel now, you can see there is a curtain wall and this one is actually fully parametric. If I go now to edit type and maybe change some of the dimensions here, maybe make this one a bit bigger and this one just a bit smaller. When I go and apply this, you can see the whole system has updated nicely. Also, I can control how much these bricks actually protrude from the facade surface. Very easy to do. If I now tap select one of the panels there and go to edit type now, I can change extrusion length maybe to something bigger like 100 and apply this. You can see that's protruding a lot more into the exterior of the facade. If I want it to be just smaller, I can go back to maybe 50. And this other parameter here, with it, I can control the width of the protruded brick units. How about we try to bring this up to 40? Let's see how it looks like. Here we go. Try this again with maybe 60 now. You can see it's getting a bit more narrow because the width of the protruded units have changed. So, let me show you now how to build this yourself in Revit. If you don't have much time, simply go down to this video description and download this brick family using the link there. Also, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe now because we do tutorials like this every single week. Okay, let's get started. I will now close this view. And from this 3D view, I can select all of these walls here and turn them back to the original type. That's a lot of mullions there because we have changed back to the original type that comes with Revit. Let's now create a custom brick panel family to turn this into the extruded brick facade. I can go now to new, choose family there. And from here, simply go for metric curtain panel. This one here. In this family editor, we should go now to the exterior elevation. And now let's specify some real world dimensions. Our panel will fill the space from here to there. So let's bring this reference plane just a bit down. I will change this value now to 225. And for the width, let's see how big it is now. That's three meters. A bit too big for some typical brick units. So let's click on this surface now and then move it this way. As you can see, this other one on the left has moved as well because this distance from here to here is the same as the one from here to there. Next step, we need to create some additional planes. Just go to create now and choose reference plane there. I can now go and make another one here, just about in the middle between the top and the bottom surface. Let's also dimension these three planes like this and click on equal to make sure this plane is always in between the other bigger planes. I can change the scale now as well to make it more readable. And while I'm here, let's make another dimension like this so we can see the overall height of the brick panel. Essentially, I want to have here two rows of brick so the total height should be this value. Or oh, actually, it should be a bit less. Let's now turn this maybe to 150. Yep, that's more like it. Moving on, we need to make sure that this panel can overlap part of the next panel on the row and also overlap 
part of the previous panel on this row. This is why if I go back to the reference photo now and maybe go to the next one, as you can see, our one panel here that we try to make in Revit will cover the 3D object or 3D geometry of these four bricks. One, two, three, four. So this one here actually needs to extend beyond the panel boundary by this amount to then latch onto the next panel on the row. Similarly, this panel here or this brick here, even though the panel boundary is about there, this unit needs to extend slightly this way by this small amount just so it can connect to the previous brick panel on this row. So let's make it happen here. By making some new reference planes, I will make one here, another one there, another one about there, and the last one about here. Now we have to drop in some new dimensions. Let's go for these two. And then these two as well, these two as well I can do, and also these two. And because everything here needs to be symmetrical, let's also drop in two new planes, maybe this way, and this way. Of course, wherever you have a plane, probably there needs to be a dimension, so let's drop in here two of them as well. I can now select all of these six new dimensions and make sure they are driven by the same parameter. Let's call this one overhang. And this will be a type parameter, that's fine. Okay, again, let's make the text a bit smaller now so we can see things more clearly. All right, now it's about time to create the actual 3D geometry of our bricks. Let's start with create and then extrusion. I can now use the pick lines tool with the lock option enabled and start picking the bottom left unit like this. Make sure that you have all of those lines trimmed to make a nice closed rectangular loop. Click on finish. And let's check it out in 3D. Little nice box there, a bit thick. Let's bring it down this way. Actually, that's not the right dimension. So we need to orbit this way and here we can make the adjustment. Okay. Even though we love doing things in 3D like this, more control is available in Floorplan. Let's go to this reference level view there. And now I can see the need for a new reference plane. Let's drop it in here like this. The distance between this plane and this one that came with the family template should be the depth of one brick unit. Let's say that should be 100. Here we go. Now I can just drag this face there and lock it. This dimension then can be driven by a new parameter. I will just call this one thickness for one brick unit there. Here we go. Now that's done for one panel or one brick. Let's go back to exterior view now and do it three more times. So again, create, and pick lines, trim these four lines like this and do finish. Once again, let's do create. Now these smaller units will be the ones that actually will protrude from the facade. That's why they are smaller, because they are rotated. So instead of seeing the elevation, the long elevation of the brick, you are actually seeing here the side elevation. And that's why it's just a bit smaller in this, in this case. Anyway, with that said, I have done creating all the four units. Let's go back to reference level now. And this one, the typical one, we can also drag it like this to make sure its thickness is controlled by the same parameter. For the two protruding units, however, 
we need to do something else. If I zoom out just a little, you can see that in this family, this side here is considered to be the exterior side of the panel. And this other one is, of course, the interior side. For these protruded units, they need to protrude to the outside. So, I can just drag this arrow like this. And for the internal face, they can still align to the same plane. So let's do that. Alignment, and then lock it. The same can be done for this second protruding unit. So extend this side, and then lock the other side. Here we go. Moving on, we need to have a good or better way to control how much they protrude. So let's drop in here another reference plane. And now I can be free to lock these two faces to that new plane, just like this. And now you guessed it, we can have in here a second dimension. And this one will be extrusion length or protruding length, whatever name you fancy. Here we go. Because I've done that, if I now go into properties and change this to maybe 50, you can see the whole thing updates nicely as well. Go into 3D now. I can see the brick panel has started to take shape. One thing important though is to make sure we can control the materials of those brick units. So let's select them like this. Go to properties and then the materials. Let's use this little button here to add a parameter here called brick material. As simply as that. There we go. I can now just save this family. Let's go to file, save as, and let's call this one protruding brick panel. That's good enough for now. Let's save it. And you guessed it, it's time to load this into the project. Now, let's create something from scratch here. So actually, let me close this project down. I want to do it again completely from nothing. So you can see the process. Let's choose new and choose project. Okay, and in here, how about we drop in here two walls. One straight, like this, and one curved, like that. Just so you can see, our brick panel can work well with both. Go to 3D now. I can now change the wall type to curtain wall. This one here. And now we can go to edit type, duplicate this, call this one protruding bricks as a new type. Next step, we need to define the vertical and horizontal grid spacing. Let's go for maximum spacing and the same for horizontal here. We can now try maybe 330 this way. And this one can be 150. Do OK. That's going to go ahead and create lots of new grid lines for us. Here we go. When I look at one panel in this system, this panel here, we need to change that panel type to the new one we just created in the family editor. That's easy to do. If I now select this wall again and go for curtain panel, I cannot select the panel we created. Actually, it's not there yet because I forgot to load it in. Let's go back to the family now and load this into project like this. It's time now to go back here for cutting panel type. We can choose protruding brick panel. This one here. And press OK. There we go. Looking nice already and super quickly as well. The edges are a bit thick, so let me just maybe make them go away just for now, so we can actually see the brick geometry. When I go to this side, for example, you can always see there, that's one brick panel, 
and that fits in nicely with other panels on this row and on this column. When I go and turn on shadow as well, that's looking really good already. Anyway, it's so grey and boring now. Let's make this into actual bricks. So I can go for this panel there, go to edit type. And remember, because we created this brick panel parameter, I can now just use this and assign something here. How about we go for maybe clay or brick. Yeah, let's start from the default one and we can change the color to suit. I will go for default wall there, choose duplicate and call this one brick. That's the one there. I can now go to appearance, duplicate the asset and change the color now to something a bit brown. Maybe this one there but further along this edge. Here we go. Let's see how it looks like. I will go OK and we can see the color for ourselves. Well, nothing changed yet because uh, we forgot to change the shading color. Let's go back to materials now and for shading, choose to use render appearance and do OK. Here we go. I can now turn back on my edges from before. And you can see that's the whole system that we have created just very quickly. Of course, because the panel itself is fully parametric, you can follow the beginning of this tutorial to change its dimensions and maybe make the length, width and height of each brick unit in the system more correct to whatever people use to build things in your country. But apart from that, it's the same thing we had here from before. Very easy and quick to do. If you have any problem creating this brick panel, just go down to the video description and follow the link there to download the panel family as well. That way you can use it straight away or inspect it to see which step you missed during the building of this family. Okay, if you enjoyed this lesson and want more like this coming every single week, make sure to subscribe to this channel now. For now, enjoy mastering Revit and I'll see you in the next video.